Hi Ahuva, welcome to Zero to Pro. Um, just looking through what you've done, just brief, brief, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> briefly skimming over. Very good, really exciting. Really uh, exciting, you've got basic equipment, which is even better because then you've got room to jump into even the fancy equipment and you'll get a massive blast in your photography. Um, welcome again. The, the, the thing that I always say when people join our class here is Remember, there's the homework and there's the photo shoot, okay? You have to do both of the courses built on you, assuming that you're going to be doing both every week uh, without fail, and this is this is what it's about, okay? The way I tell to people is that the, the class gets into your head, the homework gets it into your heart, and the photo shoot gets it into your hands, okay? And we really need it to end up in our hands. So that said, um, both of them should always be done if you have some kind of crazy, wacky, nuts, nutsoid week and you only have time for one, uh, do the photo shoot, okay? The photo shoot is really the most important part. The homework is also important, but the photo shoot is more, the photo shoot is more important, okay? Any extra shoots that you do in the week should be thought of as, thought of as an investment, okay? It's not... It's not like in any way time wasting, even though it's enjoyable and stuff, it really is an investment. If you're looking to get into this professionally, every shoot you do is worth a lot to you, really worth a lot. Okay, let's jump in. So our first class, uh, our first image is what we call triangle. And um, this is fine, this is a triangle. Um, I would, what I always say to people here is to work it out that you create a triangle that you wouldn't necessarily see only from a certain kind of vantage point. So for example, if you were to move the clock much, much forward towards you, then the clock would get, if you'd move back yourself and then move the clock, but leave the lamp in the background, the clock, so to speak, relatively would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you could create a triangle with the apex of the triangle being that smaller clock just because the lamp is far in the background. You understand? So the triangle only exists because you kind of moved yourself to a certain area. Okay? Um, so trying that because it, that's what we have to stay focused on out in the real world when we're taking pictures is triangles and squares and circles, which is the shapes that we need to compose, uh, to create our images, uh, are not always so readily available, although they are very available as well. But there's sometimes when we need to create them by moving into certain positions so that that line of the of the roof over there crosses over with the post box and that create etc cetera, etc cetera. that creates a, a triangle Are you with me okay great texture okay that is a great texture love that see it's funny that you know you'd say to somebody this is uh, it's just the bark of a tree but you realize that. Um, artists have been competing with this kind of beauty for many years i mean that looks to me like impressionist brush brush strokes let's just look oh, one second so look, i just pulled in uh, i just typed into google impressionism and um i mean it's all it's all look at look at these pictures one second i'll bring it over for you see this picture here i don't even know who it's by usually when you type in impressionism i would imagine um comes up Van Gogh, Monet, um, this looks like Van Gogh. Um, but anyway, but look at the the kind of textures that they were trying to explore. Look at the way this picture's painted. And then look at your tree. Interesting, though. No? See, beauty is it's, uh, it's very much everywhere. And it just takes certain kind of eyes to see it. And as a photographer, we're there to reveal it all over the place. Yeah, look at this, very interestingly enough, this is the texture of the bark of the tree and this is the texture on the inside of the tree. Okay, very special, very, I really appreciate that. I don't know if you did that with thought, but um, if you did, nice one. Um, but that's great, two very different experiences. This is a very natural, it looks almost like water flowing, movement down, the light here has turned and created these kind of downward daggers that means our eyes falling downwards. That probably helps us feel of the, the water plus the texture and the color is very watery. Um, and we've got here a solid, these lines here are actually very energized. We learn that vertical lines are dynamic, horizontal lines are passive. Um, diagonal lines are, depending where they are on the 
canvas, but generally more uh, more dynamic. Uh, great, excellent. This is definitely a texture. Okay, a pattern. What camera are you using, by the way? T6. Excellent. Uh, this is a pattern. Very good. Just to, I think, if you're just le lent over, just to try and, like, I think one of the things about this pattern is either create a very deep dis perspective with it. Right now, you've just kind of got these, like, very loose triangles. I mean, they're not really triangles. They're just, like, kind of, um, um, what's the word? Like, very, very subtle trapeziums because of the angle. But if you just move the camera further over and shot completely down, that would end up adding to this, the energy of this pattern. This is fine. Okay, great. I can't tell you how many people have taken the same picture for their pattern shot, which is fine, which is great. Well seen. But like I said, pay attention to straightening things up. Like as I see this book here is so to speak smaller than this book over here. That's because you are at a slight angle. So that book is further away from you than this one. Just straighten up perfectly and um, you'll see that that will end up adding to the energy and like to the just the beauty of the picture basically okay um but good that is also a pattern okay depth this is depth um wilding off into the distance what i would do to really bring this out is to get lower get lower down and as you get lower down this will become so to speak closer and this further and all of a sudden you'll start seeing a really energized depth we could definitely crop in over here we'll add a little bit more excuse me but great excellent and this is excellent great great example of depth could be if you've got a little bit lower down you would end up losing i'm not sure it would, you would give up this top part of the triangle basically uh have to see but um this is great i love the texture here as well this is a great this is a great place the truth is actually it would be a great place to take pictures if it wasn't for the concrete here because if this was also cobbly, that would be very special. This area, the wall here is very special. And you could, yeah, whenever you would get these steps in the picture, it would drop the energy. Just when you look at and when you analyze the actual um, graphics of these stairs, you can see that they're very, um, they're, they're, they're not worth much graphically. They're not worth much compared to this. Okay. I mean, really, objectively they're not worth much graphically but definitely this is an awesome texture so to, i would be trying to work this uh trying to lose miss out this area here okay good as you can see here you've actually done that exactly that now he's posed a little bit awkwardly one second this is balance okay he's posed a little bit awkwardly which is making us feel that this picture isn't so great but that could be very easily remedied. But the actual, the way that you've taken this shot is very, very intelligent because he is, um, he's actually blocking, your subject is blocking most of this area and you've really cashed in on this gorgeous texture here. Now, all he needed to do is if he just turned himself a little bit more, moved that leg outwards and put this hand on the actual floor over here, yeah, then that would fill out more, it would get rid of more of this kind of texture and also give us a, a more of an energy inwards. I'm I'm thinking about cropping in a little bit closer. But this is really a great shot. In regards to balance, um, it's a very complicated picture, this, because this hard energy is worth a lot. It's, worth, it's, it's a heavy energy, so that pulls us. It's so heavy, in a sense, it actually takes out, it contends for our attention I mean, it competes, I should say. It competes for our attention with our subject, uh, which is very rare that graphics could compete with someone's face, but it really is very, very powerful. So it's a little difficult to assess this picture. We do have a movement coming in this way. He's also he's also um, posed a little bit more to, his, to the right of the camera, so that's giving a direction this way. We've also got this very strong triangle moving this direction, so... I, it could be that it's quite balanced, but it's much, it's well beyond the scope of what we've, uh, been a very advanced composition. So I don't think we're going to get into that too much. I mean, I've basically explained it to you here. We've also got this echoing the triangle over this way. So we've got this crazy, I'll show you what the actual composition looks like. It's very rare that you get such a composition here. You've got like this, like this, and like this. Yeah. Then you've got a triangle created from him over here. He is also 
player. Um, and then on top of this kind of, this is the, on top of this, uh, all of this stuff, then you've got this crazy texture as well. And then you've got these lines going this way as well. It's a very complicated picture in short. Um, but I think we, we, we got into a bit. Okay, good. Let's look at your photo shoot. Interesting. I wonder where this place actually is. I see I have uh, students from all over the world. I don't know. It does not look like Israel. Um, I do not know, but um, interesting. Uh, interesting if you could let me take a picture at some point and try and give away where you actually are. That would be fun. Okay, you can do that as a bonus picture. I'll try and guess. Okay. Um, now, um, this picture does not work. Does not work. We're overexposed here, that's for sure. Um, the direction's going in here, but this overexposure really is the problem compared with the, the underexposure here. It's you. You look back. This is your first class. You're going to look back and you'll see that this isn't a picture um, that you will take again. Generally, we're trying to get the sun behind our subject. Okay, so you could have come around in this direction. Um, okay, let's keep going. Uh, here now. This is a nice picture. Okay, good. One thing is immediately that his foot is cut a little bit. The energy is coming down here to his foot and we uh, get kind of stopped here. Could straighten things up a little bit, but that's going to cut his foot more off. Um, but it could be if we actually crop this area. How does that work? So this actually works a lot better because we've got this line here that actually brings us around. So even though you've got this line intersecting with the edge of the canvas, we've got this line of his leg that actually moves us around. So this is actually a much better composition. This is great. Um, the problem is that the background is dark and his hair is dark, so he kind of blends into the background. Not much you could have done about that. Good shot. Okay. Um, so this is fine. What I would think about, though, is having the trick I mean, one of the rules you're going to learn is that we want to have the background far from our subject so obviously that wasn't the case here but using the tree in a a more like we, we want our subject to pop out the problem is now that we've got this we've got this very it's very beautiful but a very heavy texture what would be better probably would be if he were to have him leaning on the tree with his arm and shooting with the tree to one side of the frame and him to the other side of the frame, then it would become that the tree isn't actually jostling for our attention. It just becomes a graphical um, energy or experience, so to speak, at the side of the frame, and then our subject on the other side of the frame. I think that would make things feel a little bit... Um, they definitely make things feel uh, quite a lot different. That's what I would do over here. In regards to a picture in Lightroom, So let me just show you how we could. I'm not going to do this because his pose is really his pose is a little awkward, which means that the picture's worth nothing. Like not, I want to say it's worth nothing, but like we learned, subject reigns supreme. Um, you can have the most gorgeous picture. I think you're going to see that in the next class. That you can have the most gorgeous picture in the world, but if the girl's eyes are kind of squinty or she looks kind of funny, it doesn't matter how gorgeous the sunset is, how gorgeous the lines are in the light and everything. If she's got her eyes closed. Yeah, it's for the bin. Okay, whereas the opposite is true, where if the person looks perfect, but the picture's not, you know, it's a little flat or it's not, whatever, uh, it's fine. It, not it's fine, it will pass. The goal is, as an exceptional photographer, is to be getting the subject perfect and the graphics perfect. Okay, so it's not going to really make up for it because the problem here is really the, gra is the subject. But graphics-wise, what we could do with a picture like this... Um, is something like I would be using my um, paintbrush and I would be going over here. I'm not going to be leaving it like this, don't worry. Now, all we need to do is put up the clarity and check that out. Wow. I think also I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. But you see, look at the energy. Look over here. I'm going to add this in now. Look at the energy that adds. See, so if he was like with his legs open, looking really cool, kind of with his hands, you know, like something more like this. Yeah, with his arms, you can't see me so well, but with his arms hanging on his uh, hanging on his knees, looking into that direction. Then we could darken also, I would create a new thing over here. 
darken this area over here and come around darken over there as well just keep us in do you see the kind of energies that we've added like i said again the subject doesn't hold out here so we don't have the picture so to speak but that was just the, the way that i would go in creating adding to the uh, energies of the picture okay this was an excellent excellent beginning and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do for us in the uh, in the future and especially next week. Okay, all the best.